Mr. Pandey, we are ready. Whenever you are ready, you, you can start the program. Hello, uh, Dr. Aswad. Yeah. All the members have come. Yeah, I think they are joining about uh, 40 of joined. Yeah. A little more. Yeah, maybe another five minutes we can start. Yeah. Because we have not taken the registration, it is a direct program. Yeah, we do not know how many will be joining. Uh, maybe I, in another five minutes we can start off the program. Uh, okay. Those who are interested, they will uh, keep joining. Okay. So, three ten. Yeah. Jain sir, how are you doing? Um, nice to see you uh, after a long time. Yeah, good. That's right, good. Now, uh, uh, at SCCG, all the sectors are uh, becoming active in organizing all the webinars on okay. the topics. So yeah. We had many on uh, structures related topics. Uh, today is uh, slightly off uh, the cement concrete uh -huh. steel. So we have an STP today. Uh, thanks to Mr. Pandey for uh, taking lead and organizing this program. It be very good because it's also related to civil engineering. <laughs> and uh, it's a good initiative that ACC has taken. Yes, sir. Very good. And there will be series of seminars like this on topical subjects. Yes, sir. So that will be very good. Right. Yes, sir. In fact, in the next two weeks, uh, uh, we will also get topics on uh, cloud computing and uh, things like that. Okay. I'm already in discussion with some of the experts. Uh, we'll yes. talk about uh, the latest uh, IT in construction engineering. Okay. So we'll get some topics on that. And already uh, we have a working group on sustainability mm -hmm. under uh, institutes. So they have organized uh, a series of lectures on Saturdays on sustainability in, uh, uh, very in construction. That is a very important topic, yeah. Sustainability is very important, very good. Very good. So making use of the uh, comparatively leisure time uh, by many of our members and uh, discussing various topics. Very nice. Yes, yes sir. Uh, I think, Mr. Pandey, we can start uh, the program. So you would, as per the program, you would like to speak a little bit or shall I start? Yeah, maybe a few uh, minutes. Uh, 
Uh, welcome uh, to all the participants and especially the officials from uh, Daiki Access India uh, to this program organized by Association of Consulting Civil Engineers India. As all of you know, ACCE is a very popular uh, consulting uh, engineers association uh, working for the betterment of the construction industry in general and the consultants in particular. And uh, uh, one of the major uh, ob objective of the association is to uh, disseminate <coughs> the knowledge uh, which is uh, essential uh, for uh, uh, all the consulting engineers. So today's topic uh, is on uh, role of decentralized STPs, Indian water situation, challenges and opportunities for civil engineers. So this program is exclusively uh, organized uh, uh, by Daiki Access India, and uh, we'll have, uh, we have Mr. KC Fonde, advisor to Daisy, uh, Daiki Access, and Mr. Rio Vaza, director, and Mr. Kamal Tiwari. I welcome all of them uh, for this uh, program. <coughs> they will be discussing in detail about uh, the decentralized STPs. In fact, uh, decentralized STPs have become a norm uh, today and it has a buzzing word and trend in the uh, industry um, because mainly because uh, it can be adopted for uh, many of the uh, uh, layouts or residential villas exclusively and uh, the reduction in the cost in uh, treating uh, uh, the uh, wastewater and uh, things like that. So uh, more on that will be explained uh, by the officials uh, present here from the ACC. Yeah. So I would like to just uh, uh, sensitize that ACC is doing a lot of activities, uh, not only knowledge dissemination activities, but it is also doing a lot of activities to protect the rights and the concerns of civil engineering uh, in general in the industry. And wherever there is a, a support required for all the members, uh, uh, ACC is coming forward and uh, equipping uh, the uh, members. We have been doing a lot of activities. ACC has formed a separate uh, working groups on various topics. Uh, one, one, uh, one of the uh, major uh, activity that we are doing now is on sustainability engineering. Uh, series of lectures have been organized uh, through online platform on every Saturday. So I request all the participants to uh, watch out for all the messages uh, through WhatsApp groups and they can also join uh, uh, SEC's Telegram group where all the members can get the information and updates from the engineering. So I was just uh, uh, looking uh, through uh, the uh, sustainability goals. Uh, goal number six is clean water and sanitation is the sustainability development uh, by the UNDP. So according to this, uh, uh, about 71% uh, of the global population, uh, 5.2 billion people had safely managed drinking water in 2015 when all the process started. But 844 million people still lack even basic uh, drinking water. And about 39% uh, of the global population and 2.9 billion people had safe sanitation in 2020, but 2.3 billion people still lacked basic sanitation. 892 million people practiced open education. So 80% of wastewater goes into waterways without adequate treatment. So it is a major uh, percentage of uh, water. About 2 billion. Uh, uh, water resource uh, water stress uh, affects more than 2 billion people with this figures projected to increase. 80% of countries have laid the foundations for integrated water resource management and uh, the world has lost 70% of its natural wetlands for the last century. So uh, uh, the target set by the UNDP for the global targets is by 2030 achieve universal and equitable access to safe and affordable drinking water for all. By 2030, achieve access to adequate and equitable sanitation and hygiene for all and end open defecation, paying special attention to the needs of women and girls and uh, those in vulnerable situations. By 2030, improve water, equal, water quality by reducing pollution, eliminating dumping and minimizing release of hazardous chemicals and materials, solving the proportion of untreated wastewater and sustainably increasing recycling and safe uh, reuse uh, globally. By 2030, sustainability increase water use efficiency across all sectors and ensure sustainable withdrawals and supply of fresh water to address water scarcity and 
substantially reduce the number of people suffering from water scarcity. By 2030, implement integrated water resource management at all levels, including through transboundary cooperation as appropriate. Uh, to protect and restore water-related ecosystems, including mountains, forests, wetlands, rivers, aquifers, and lakes, by 2030, expand international cooperation and capacity building support to developing countries in water and sanitation related activities programs including water harvesting desalination water efficiency wastewater treatment recycling and reuse technologies support and strengthen the participation of local communities in improving water and sanitation management so uh, uh, connected to this uh, a lot of targets are set and uh, today's topic is uh, that's definitely connected uh, with uh, the uh, uh, with this uh, aspect and uh, water is uh, as all of us know is uh, uh, not very effectively managed uh, throughout the world and i'm sure uh, uh, programs like this will definitely throw some light and sensitize all the civil engineers especially and uh, uh, today's program it is also mentioned what are the uh, challenges available uh, and uh, opportunities available uh, in this direction. I'm sure uh, the experts are there. We have uh, Mr. Pande, uh, Mr. Kamal Tiwari, and we have Ria Waza. Uh, all of them will highlight on the various aspects of uh, uh, today's topic. And I'm sure at the end of the program, all the participants will get some value addition and some tips to practice in this area. Uh, in the suitable technology uh, by taking inputs from all the experts. Uh, over to uh, Mr. Pandey. Uh, uh, thank you very much for uh, co coordinating uh, with ACC for this program. And I'm sure uh, all of you will uh, definitely give some valuation to all the participants. I welcome all of you once again and all the participants to this program organized by Association of Consulting Children Assembly. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Amyo Aswat, President, Association of Consulting Civil Engineers India. Mr. K.R. Garua Dhawanji, Secretary General AC ACCE. Mr. Badrinath Singri, Treasurer ACCE. Mr. J. Tamil Selvam, Vice President South. Mr. Satish Raipure, Vice President West. All the office bearer of ACC and member of ACC and all eminent civil engineers participating today from across the country. Mr. Rio Waja, Director Daiki Access, who is online today from Tokyo. Normally he is based in India, but because of the COVID he is there. Mr. Kamal Tiwari, our CEO, Daiki Access, who is known in the industry as a waterman. Good afternoon to everybody. And welcome uh, in today's webinar of role of decentralized STPs, Indian wa water situation, challenges and opportunities for civil engineers. First of all, on behalf of Daiki, I would like to thank the president, Ms. Dr. Aswat and, and uh, uh, ACC to give us this opportunity. As you are all aware that world is facing big crisis due to water. It is said that if there is a world war, it is going to be fought on water only. The, our problem in India is much more even bigger since India is 80% of the world population and 20% of world livestock population, whereas India has only 4% of water resources. India receives about 80% of its water through its river. Our total retention capacity is only 15%. We are heavily dependent on groundwater and about 65% of total water for drinking industry and agriculture comes from groundwater. As per estimate, India is consuming 25% of total groundwater alone, which is more than being used by China and America put together. Depleting of groundwater is posing a major challenge to our country. Our total sewage augmented installed capacity in urban India is only 30%. And out of this also only 50% is being utilized. The 60% sewage being generated by the population living in rural India has no infrastructure in place even till to date. As per Niti Aayog report, 60 crore of our population faces extreme water stress. About 2 lakh people lose life every year due to inadequate access to safe water. In the year 2016, per population, 
and disease burden due to unsafe water and sanitation was 40 times higher in India than China and 12 times higher than Sri Lanka. The provision of facilities and services for the wastewater treatment is very essential because 80% of diseases are caused by improper sanitation, inadequate hygienic condition. As per the IIT Chennai report, a 10% extra investment in wastewater treatment is expected to result in 80% saving in providing basic health care. It is also estimated that 6.4% of Indian GDP is lost due to improper sanitation. If we look towards the, our consumption pattern of water, domestic consumption is about 6%, industry is about 5%, and agriculture, horticulture, and other things put together about 89%. Just to cite an example, to produce 1 kg of rice in India, we are consuming 5,600 liters of water, whereas China uses only 350 liters of water per kg. So these are some of the problem, and uh, uh, Mr. President, you have already highlighted uh, you know, many of the problem worldwide. So what are the solution? If we look to the solution, we think that one of the solution could be decentralized treatment model. And in decentralized treatment model, if we look around the country in our neighboring country, so Japanese models are very, very relevant. In 1970, Japan was almost at a similar situation as we are in India today. So, so what they have done, basically, the learning experience that what they have done, they have, they have a a law called Jokaso, Jokaso law, and a separate ministry works for this. The model operates on basically four parameters, the law, the policy, the technology, and the effective uh, execution. If we compare those all four, four parameters in Indian scenario, so if we see as per the law, National Green has directed all urban municipalities to use treated wastewater for horticulture. Government of India in its intended nationally determined contribution, INDC, submitted to UN Framework Convention in Climate Change in October 2015 has committed to improve wastewater efficiency by 20% and this is legally binding commitment on India. If we see the policy, you know, at the policy level, various uh, departments and state governments have come out with the policy. If we see Karnataka has a policy in place. Uh, uh, Haryana has a beautiful policy. Many states have come out and, and you know, Delhi, if you see the Delhi, Delhi has, has made 100% recycling of water in school mandatory and they have banned use of groundwater in city parks. By the way, Delhi has about 20,000 plus parks. The CPCB, the Central Board of Pollution Control has come out clear cut with guidelines. Now, so, so there are, there is a law is in place, the policies are there. What is that? The next thing we are looking for is the technology. And what should be the technology? So we believe the technology should be proven. It should be modular. It should be scalable. It should be sustainable. It should have long life, cost effective, and low operating cost, and should be environment friendly. It should be also quick to deploy. About uh, Jokaso technology, uh, with your permission, uh, uh, Mr. President, I would like to quote the views expressed by Sri K. Vijay Raghavan, Principal Scientific Advisor to Government of India, which he has done in month of December 2019 to the Ministry of Jal Sakti. Jal Sakti. I quote here, Our analysis and background research reveals that the Jokaso, the system to have potential strong application towards the success of the Jal, Sak Jal Jeevan mission, and in particular the treatment of grey water. The system is modular in nature, uses a combination of aerobic digester, anaerobic digester, and water filtration techniques to process wastewater from residences and commercial establishment in a decentralized manner. The system can be implemented starting at a single house level and also scaled up to village and large apartment complex level or industry level. It removes the necessity of trying to create centralized sewage system where the infrastructure does not exist already. It, it is, it is, its success is demonstrated by the fact that close to 26% of all Japanese household waste is treated by Jokaso. Further, Japanese also have evolved interesting policy framework and standard to allow multiple industry to de deploy the Jokaso, unquote. Now, about the, the fourth thing is successful, you know, uh, the implementation, the part about the Daiki. Daiki India, Daiki India is a subsidiary of Daiki Access Company Limited Japan. It was founded in 1958, listed in Tokyo Stock Exchange with a turnover of around 3,000 crore and group turnover of 
28,000 crore. We have four manufacturing plants and 27 offices in Japan. Have six overseas manufacturing plants, including one in Wapi, Gujarat, under Make in India program. We have done almost in a short period of time 120 plus installation across the country, all in government, uh, PSUs, and also private. The company can provide innovative technology and product. We can also offer boot model and very innovative financial model for technologies deployment supported by end to end services. At the last, I would say. Uh, that India and Japan has a long and successful history of bringing in revolution in many sectors like automobile, metros, and railways, and hopefully we can see this happening in water sector as well. With this, and at the last, what we say, Jindagi ki chalegi cycle, yadi pani hoga recycle. With this, I on behalf of Daiki once again thank you. Uh, 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 thank you very much for giving us this opportunity and request our uh, director Rio Vaja to give, uh, present his, uh, start his uh, technical presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Pandey. Uh, Mr. Rio, you can share your screen. Yeah, it is visible now. You can go. Right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Namaskar, everyone. Uh, my name is Rio. Uh, I'm uh, belong to Daiki Axis. Now, Mr. Pandey, uh, he explained uh, what is Daiki and what is Jokaso. So, uh, in my uh, turn, uh, I will explain uh, very quickly uh, Japanese history of water treatment and uh some technical part of joe castle and uh uh today uh acc is uh, civil engineering association and so uh i will explain some part of civil work related joe castle stp okay so first uh quickly i will explain about japanese history and uh station First, uh, this is image of Jokaso STP. Outside uh, looks just tank made by made from uh, FRP, and uh, inside FRP tank there is uh, four five compartment and uh, put uh, several function. And you can see this for oh sorry. You can see this photo. Uh, this is Japanese river, Sumida River in Tokyo, one of the famous river in Japan. And this photo was uh, 1970s. Now, Sumida River is very clean river, but uh, at the time, uh, very, very dirty. Uh, every year, I took uh, 100 to 150 government person uh from japan to india and i i create small uh city tour or like that uh uh some 50 60 70 ages those uh person from japan they mention uh current uh indian river and water condition was similar uh to japanese 1970s Okay, uh, come back uh, my presentation. Uh, 1974, Japanese government started Jokaso, Jokaso Act, like a Jokaso law. And uh, government uh, started product and Jokaso model approval. So uh, try to eliminate uh, error product, copy product from market. So uh, any user, uh, uh can reach good product of course uh those product is approved product by japanese government and now uh japanese water condition become become clean mm, not quickly gradually now uh, 1997 
percent uh, water is treated and discharged to natural uh, water body or reuse. Jokaso STP is not chemical treatment, biological treatment. So uh, this page only that point I want to mention. And Jokaso STP is complete uh, packaged product for water treatment, but domestic waste water treatment, not uh, chemical water treatment or industrial water treatment. Because biological treatment, so um, bacteria, uh, bacteria and uh, some acid or those chemical is not good combination. And Jokaso can install underground, you can see this photo, underground and above ground. And in Japan, almost all install under car parking area like this. And uh, some part uh, under green area. So Japan also, land is limited. Uh, India, uh, city or metro area also limited. Land is very uh, precious. So uh, this uh, usage is very good. And of course, this install under car parking uh, this case, uh, civil engineering and civil uh, support is necessary to our company or our system. Uh, this page only one point. Uh, Jokaso main concept is uh, treat locally and reuse locally. It means, uh, okay, uh, rural area, there is no centralized STP and pipeline those system so uh, each area or each household we can install jokaso and reuse that water for uh, hot culture or something and in metro city also we can install jokaso to each building and gen wastewater generated uh, generated in building those water treat in same property and reuse in same property so uh, no need uh, too much pipeline or too much uh, initial investment that is uh, main concept of jokaso stp of course uh, water uh, parameter treat water perform uh, sorry uh, treatment performance is uh, we meet uh, indian central pollution control board and uh, NGT. And this is recent, uh, recent uh, report. Jokas STP uh, can treat uh, COVID-19, so uh, domestic wastewater, toilet water, or hand wash, those water, uh, through and treat by Jokas STP, that output water, treated water, I can use for gardening or reuse for toilet flush. Uh, uh, no farm food. And about Daikyakshis, Mr. Pandey already explained. Uh, we already have an uh, Indian factory in Gujarat. And last three years, we installed more than 100 units, uh, 100 sites uh, all over India. And this is image of uh, our factory in Gujarat, Wapi. And uh, last uh, 20 years, 25 years, we install uh, more than uh, 20 lakh, uh, 2 million uh, unit all over the world, uh, except Japan. Japan, uh, we install uh, much more. And just reference, this is NTPC Mada in Nagpur, uh, Black, Right side, this is uh, raw water and uh, treated water. And uh, this is DDA, uh, Delhi Development Authority Park in Delhi. POD uh, 200 become 8, COD TSS like this. And sorry, um, treated water used for gardening in this garden. Uh, same. Uh, Treated water used for gardening in uh, this is Nagpur, Narendra Nagar Garden. 
an IT park uh, installed under green area. This you cannot see on you can see only manhole. This is Jokaso after uh, install. And these are technical part, uh, how to treat and uh, what is advantage of this product uh, in terms of uh, biological treatment, less power or those point. First compartment, we remove uh, plastic or some floating material. You can see only one week uh, plastic bag or pet bottle correct here. And second chamber, uh, anoxic, uh, anaerobic treatment. Uh, we put anaerobic media. Third chamber, uh, MBBR, floating uh, media and uh, uh, moving bed uh, bioreactor. Uh, MBBR is common in India. And uh, forced uh, sedimentation and uh, disinfection. And uh, final sedimentation area, we put airlift system from aeration blower, not pump. Uh, same aeration blower used for yeah, airlift system. And uh, always untreated water go back to first chamber and treat again and again. This is feature of Jokaso STP, uh, low energy consumption, 50%, uh, 70%, 75% less than conventional STP in India, no need Operator, no product is automatic work, only monthly maintenance we require. Yeah, monthly maintenance is very easy and quickly. And nitrogen treatment, no leak smell, no noisy sound, no need equalization tank before our product. And uh, sludge generation is less. Uh, installation, after civil work, uh, installation is very easy, or just one day. And all product produced in factory at installation site just connect inlet pipe, outlet pipe, and aeration. That all so uh, very easy. This is a uh, process inside the process. Yeah. Uh, if uh, someone uh, want to understand this uh, inside process, yeah, uh, of course I can share this presentation and. Uh, separately uh, explain more uh, technical part. Yeah, so please uh, request to me or uh, my company. And key point of treatment, nitrification, denitrification, continuous happen. This nitrification, denitrification, continuous process is most important. In India, aerobic treatment, it means nitrification, is very good. Everyone uh, focus aerobic treatment, but anaerobic treatment also very important. Nitrification, denitrification, this uh, continuous process means nitrification, denitrification, and nitrification again, denitrification again. We put recirculation system, so always uh, water recirculate and treat again and again. It means nitrification, denitrification happen again and again. And uh, wastewater uh, become M2, O2, H2O. This is treatment. And uh, I touch a little bit uh, civil part. Uh, this is uh, general drawing of Jokaso and Jokaso installation. Now, uh, this Jokaso system install underground this case install underground so first uh, we request civil engineering a civil in civil company excavate excavate uh, the ground uh, 2.5 meter and uh, wide is depend on product size 
and uh, put a PCC and uh, RCC foundation. Yes, PCC RCC foundation. Uh, you can see this drawing. And uh, one more thing uh, we request to civil work uh, put anchor bolt. Now, uh, this is a uh, physical anchor. So put this point, physical anchor or chemical anchor. Uh, this, these are uh, requests. Always we need support from civil company. And uh, our Jokas STP main tank produced by FRP, not RCC, but uh, always installation is very standardized. Only two parts, only two difference. Install underground or install above ground, but both are same. Make uh, PCC RCC foundation and put anchor bolt. So uh, not only our company, uh, civil company, civil work engineering company also standardized, can standardize this uh, site work. So not only big uh, civil company, small company also, uh, only small resource, human resource or uh, mm, some raw material, those resource, only limited resource, uh, those company can perform many, many uh, work, many time, only one week, any company can finish this uh, civil work. Usually make RCC tank uh, one month or some more time required. So uh, money have to keep in one project. But uh, this case, our civil work, our Jokaso civil work, only short term uh, investment or resource no need, so, not, no need so much. And uh, many work do finish, do finish. So uh, many time, uh, even small company can do in uh, some period, for example, half a year or one year. Actually, uh, in Sri Lanka, uh, in Kenya, in Bangladesh, uh, surrounding country in India, uh, this civil work, all usually uh, three to four days include excavation. So uh, Indian company also have good uh, technique and knowledge and machine. So uh, we expect a civil company to work uh, with us in any uh, location uh, to install Jokas STP. And this is a comparison uh, how uh how mm, how how to uh how to say uh how good um uh what is good point of jokaso compared than uh some other treatment process sbr process mbbr process mbr process and jokaso yeah uh of course less investment good uh result is always good so uh indian government uh, now uh getting understand uh what is joe castle and uh many tender uh going to flow now uh only joe castle system or uh similar to joe castle system of course not only our company uh, Japanese government have main technique of this Jokaso STP. Daiki access is one of uh, prayer under uh, Japanese government. So Japanese government now uh, push and uh, try to launch this Jokaso system and product in India. So uh, Daiki uh, work together with Japanese government and uh, Today also, yeah, everyone, uh, thank you for coming. Uh, try to explain and 
market to explain and uh, launch this product and technology. Yeah. Other good point, uh, running cost is very low compared than, uh, compared than uh, conventional one. And uh, performance, uh, dirty water become clean and uh, BOD, COD, TSS, those parameters also uh, we can control only for agriculture, uh, no need so much clean water, but uh, toilet flush, uh, completely clean water is better. So those points uh, we can consult uh, for case by case. And Mr. Pandey explained, we are manufacturer and uh, water treatment and water uh, resource, uh, sorry, water solution provider, but uh, some uh, financial scheme also we uh, try to uh, bring and uh, exp uh, expand or uh, spread in India, uh, BO, BOT uh, model. Not in India, uh, other country, India also, yeah, few uh, project started. Other countries, uh, we already work with local municipality or central government to uh, uh, central government by this scheme, utilize this scheme, BO, BOT. Yeah. This is final page uh, of my presentation. Uh, most important point, main concept, this uh, Jokas STP is decentralized STP and produce in factory 100% and uh, treat at site, reuse at site. No need long piping, no need so much maintenance. Yeah. And uh, running cost is low. Maybe uh, we can, uh, mm, not we, sorry, uh, this product will meet uh, Indian expectation and uh, become a good support for Indian uh, environment. Okay, uh, thank you very much for uh, taking time and uh, uh, hearing my presentation. Thank you. Uh, Ryo-san, there is a request for you to share uh, the costing comparison seat again. Somebody has put a request in the chat box. So if you can explain it again, yes. This one? Yes, I think so. Mm. Okay, uh, this is performance comparison as well as uh, cost comparison. Initial cost, yeah, this is 50 KLD, uh, 50 KLD only, uh, sorry, not include uh, tax and transportation cost. Initial cost, uh, SBR system, MBBR system, and MBR system. Mm. MBR is very useful technology, but uh, treatment target is very high. So uh, very clean water if you require, uh, this system is good, but uh, need operator and electrical consumption is high. And uh, after four years, five years need to replace membrane, main, main, part, main part. So that cost is high. So ERE uh, cost is very high if you can consider 10 years uh, operation. And uh, SBR technology also good, but uh, treatment performance is not, actually not meet current CPCB standard. And uh, of course need a operator and a little bit wide uh, footprint required compared to MBBR or Jokaso system. Jokaso, uh, no need operator. This cost, operator cost is one of big uh, cost for operation and maintenance. Uh, and uh, electrical consumption, uh, you can see very low because we use only aeration blower that brewer also not uh, root brewer, 
this bro is magnetic diaphragm bro so uh very low consumption energy consumption and uh low sound like uh, mobile vibration sound so uh include replace some parts or additional parts but uh yearly maintenance cost is very low compared to others uh yeah you can see uh, 36 thousand is our uh, estimation this page is running cost uh, expra explanation blue is jokaso stp and orange is indian current conventional stp same as 50 kld uh, include operator electrical consumption plus operator those cost stp use not only one years five years use 10 years 20 years so this cost gap is very very big and very big stress to user so uh i don't suggest uh very high learning cost yeah it is okay or need to explain some more uh part uh, i think this is okay 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 everyone thank you very much thank you mr Leo. <laughs> Yeah, I think now uh, Mr. Kamal Tiwari will uh, address and then we'll take it to the end. Thank you, Rio san, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for giving us this opportunity. Uh, let me just share the screen. Yeah, hope my screen is now visible. Yeah, so. Uh, I would like to cover uh, uh, basically some of the points made by previous speakers and also put this into context, both the problem, uh, the challenge which we are facing and the solution going forward and more from a business point of view or more uh, from a, a real practice point of view, how it can be used and how it can impact uh, the regular business. <laughs> so world water crisis already very well described in by first two speakers so i don't want to highlight this area but i want to bring in more perspective of business and the impact of it if you look at uh, there are forecasts that by 2050 almost 200 people, uh, million people will be uh, displaced due to uh, related issues related to water water um, uh, if you look at 90 percent of uh, natural hazards are uh, issues are related to water and water and sanitation burden like mr pandey explained it is almost 10 percent of the global disease burden and if you look at water uh, is the prime requirement for both food and energy and these are the two big consumer of water so if water is affected then agriculture or food availability and energy both are uh, uh, at this, uh, let's say the risk so, and also a very important point from an economic and business point of view 75 percent of global jobs all jobs across industries and sectors depend on water in a very high or moderate way. and uh, like uh, it is already explained that is why sdg uh, goal clearly defined one goal number six is clearly dedicated to water and ensuring that the water and sanitation is covered to be. Now, if you look at in India, we have uh, many big missions and uh, let's say division which are uh, being planned by the government and by the country, which includes meeting SDG goal, Jal Jeevan mission by providing safe drinking water at each household, Swachh Bharat mission, which is now talking about 100% liquid treatment at both rural and urban area, increasing farmers income and increasing the size of the economy 
So if you look at water is at a core of all these issues and unless we solve water issues, many of these objectives cannot be met. And if you look at reality of the issue in terms of water, we are very uh, highly stressed nation in terms of water. Our groundwater resources are depleting. Top 21 cities in the country are basically looking to a very challenging time from groundwater situation. By 2021, we are expecting these cities to run out of groundwater. And household issues are very high, where we maybe majority portion uh, in both rural and urban area in across states are uh, uh, exposed to moderate and high uh, water stress situation. And if you look at on sewage side, it is very sad that 63% of the sewage still goes and treated to water bodies, ground or natural environment, which creates further uh, issues for uh, related to health and environment. So this situation, uh, if you look at one side, we have very large vision and population to take care of and also to grow the economic activities while we are already in poor water stress situation. So what we believe, like Mr. Pandey also explained, one such uh, model could be to reduce, recycle and reuse, which is a very famous model of 3R, and where uh, we can bring in sustainable design and responsible construction at the core of uh, engineering and uh, construction industry. And another uh, mindset change which is needed uh, so far, we uh, look at wastewater as a resource, of, let's say as a problem, and as a waste which has to be eliminated out of our uh, activities, business activities, or of our noise, and need to be dumped somewhere. But if you look at uh, in a more uh, economic uh, sense, that it is a resource stream which from where uh, water, energy, nutrients, and all other beneficial products can be retrieved, which can, let's say, uh, move to a recyclable economy. So it is an economic resource rather than a problem. And if you look at water security is very essential for a country like India, which has very large population and which is a developing country where we cannot uh, uh, bring down our economic activity. We need to somehow sustain it. And there is a strong nexus between water, food and energy because food and energy are the two prime uh, source uh, sources where water is required. So unless the water issues are resolved, we will still have problem of food and energy. And now there are local policies, international compliance requirement, and many compliance requirement from NGT and uh, uh, Environment Ministry and state governments. So businesses need to uh, comply to that. And it is moreover essential for uh, sustaining business activities and improving productivity. And uh, so this, if you look at many things are happening in our uh, environment or surroundings, such Bharat mission, government policies are talking about recycling. We would, many states, almost 10, 12 states have come up with the clear defined policy and timeline, time bound goals for recycling, we would, both for business and uh, general usage. NGT has put a stringent norm for treated wastewater. Many places groundwater is not, uh, now allowed to be used for horticulture and construction purposes. And uh, there are heavy penalties are being posed, both in many metros, uh, which amounts to almost five lakh rupees a month kind of a penalty for operating groundwater for uh, non-prescribed uh, applications. And these are uh, policies which are already there in place. These are already covered. So if I look at, let's say from a point of view of uh, the audience which is there today. One, of course, there is an environment issue if you look at uh, which we have appreciated during uh, this COVID period that uh, because of our uh, desire for economic uh, activities and business activities, environment has been compromised. And now we can see that the air and water, everybody, it has caught our attention that it is essential for human life and compliance requirement is there we cannot uh, do uh, we, it is mandatory to use recycling in all of our projects both uh, industrial and commercial projects economic reasons if you look at uh, it makes economic sense to re 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 reutilize the wastewater 
for the local usage which are non portable application and also it is uh, it is optimum use of resources because more water you uh, drop from ground or uh, natural resources more energy you consume and it also directly have impact on productivity both uh, in terms of manpower and also financial productivity of projects so it is for these reasons why it is essential to look at water as a core issue and rather than just looking at it uh, as uh, somebody else's problem now this is already explained uh, i would just like to say that in uh, india where already 67% of uh, sewage is going untreated so we have a opportunity we can probably wait for a centralized network to be created and uh, the centralized system to be installed all over the place both in urban and rural area or we can follow a model which was followed in uh, many other industries so we believe that in decentralized model has many uh, advantages over centralized system though centralized has its own advantages decentralized system uh, doesn't require a lot of piping network to be created so it is very simple in terms of logistics time requirement for execution of such project is very simple uh, it is very short in fact we have uh, just uh, completed a project from concept to handover within 30 days time period in haryana so it is very quick uh, deployment of the project cost both in terms of capital and uh, operating cost requirement is very low compared to centralized system and it is very scalable we don't uh, need to plan 15 year ahead and then install that capacity today and invest money today we can increase the capacity as the occupancy of the project uh, keep increasing so it is very scalable model and for reusing treated waste water in case of centralized system because the usage points are normally different than uh, the treatment points so again the pipe network has to be created or the treated water has to be transported through uh, tankers while as in the uh, decentralized model it can be directly reused at the local site and we can uh, just to relate we have seen uh, telecom industry did the same uh, revolution came we were following a fixed moon uh, concept while in the mobile bring in basically a decentralized model and now we have seen how much uh, communication and uh, communication in the country has changed by usage of uh, mobile phones learning from power industry if you look at a very small example of a cfl being used at uh, public places and household uh, it can bring in significant amount of uh, power saving same example is also there in rooftop solar equipment so same thing can also be done in uh, sewage treatment uh, side which we believe and the technology is very well documented and uh, established cpheo manual which is the public health engineering reference manual in india describes uh, jopaso as the advanced technology for wastewater management mr pandey already quoted mr psa and we recently also got uh, first time uh, in indian history jopaso became the like access jopaso became the first package treatment plant or stp plant to get a green product certificate so it is now very useful for green green building projects in india and also we have similar certificate internationally and so uh, like uh, explained by rio san basically domestic water after consumption comes to jokaso through all uh, generating points which could be kitchen wash basin bathroom or toilet and the whole water can which includes gray and black water gets treated and can be used for different uh, non potable application which could be gardening toilet plus cooling tower maker car washing fire fighting and control and for construction purposes this is already explained by rio san so i want to only highlight two other point one i already highlighted pascal execution it is it takes only one third of the time to compare to conventional solutions to implement uh, jokaso based solution it is very simple technology it is not uh, is using more gravity and uh, basic science it is not adding too many gadgets so the technology doesn't need too many skilled people to operate it on 24 by 7 it is long life product which because it is made out of fpp it is high and uh, high and consistent performing product because products are made in factory so all products can perform the same way 
and the technology is uh, certified at each stage by government of Japan from design, manufacturing, and performance. So in a way, you get a certificate of technology from government of Japan. And in Japan, they also have uh, operators and engineers certified by government. Maybe we have a way to go there. And uh, one question was there about footprint and power requirement. Uh, if you look at uh, one KLD system, the area requirement is very low, one meter uh, to 1.89 meter length and 1.63 meter uh, of height. Compared, let's say, then if you look at a 50 KLD unit uh, or let's say a 25 KLD unit, we are talking about a 2.54 meter of width, 5.26 meter of length, and 2.48 meter of uh, height. And the power requirement is just 0.4 lower. And uh, so if you install it underground, practically your, uh, your footprint uh, comes to uh, almost negligible. Okay, SSTDs are already explained, but I would just like to highlight a point of that in DDA, though it looks a very simple system of 10 KLD uh, capacity, but in a year we are saving almost 3.6 million liter of fresh water or groundwater just from one unit. So, and we have recently launched solar based Jokasu in Haryana. So, the second largest uh, operating cost, which is electricity, also is taken out of the equation and now this becomes completely off grid system also which has, opens up uh, many other opportunities these are already explained so i don't want to repeat the content we have uh, many global brands using our product not only in india and internationally we have repeat business from them so there is a credibility of the product and the, these are the main point it is very high performance product yet very simple it doesn't need uh, too much uh, technical uh, uh, support from outside faster deployment it can be very easily be deployed it is scalable flexible and the total cost of ownership of product is very low and this is where i would like to hide highlight the point uh, because we are uh, here uh, the consulting engineers STP is a long-term product asset which is created by the user, which has, uh, let's say, a long life of 15, 20, 30 years. So when we consider the cost of the project, I feel that we should look at capital, operating cost, and energy consumption all put together and the life of the product, and that's how the cost should be calculated rather than just looking at capex. So to end, it it is, uh, it, is uh, it can help uh, us to have water security for the nation, it can resolve sanitation issues, it can revive the local environment, uh, way, which we are doing in many places, including in Bangalore. And uh, it also supports circular economy by retrieving resources out of the uh, waste stream. So thank you so much. And in construction, we believe that it can also uh, be helpful during the uh, construction phase of the project where it can provide good healthy and working condition for uh, workers while the water can be retrieved and used for construction purposes so thank you so much. this is the presentation i wanted to make and we are now open for any questions or clarification which you might have see thank you yeah thank you kamal uh... Uh, now it is session is open for question and answers. Uh, you can unmute your mic and uh, uh, ask the question uh, to the experts. Uh, you have any office in Bangalore? Uh, we don't have, sir, office in Bangalore. We have a colleague in uh, Chennai who looks after entire South. Uh, his name is Mr. Janis, but we do have a sales partner uh, in Chennai, uh, in Bangalore. Sales and service partner, local partner is there. Okay. Uh, uh, please share the address and uh, contact number. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I'll just uh, send it on the chat box. Meanwhile, we can continue with other questions. I have a question. 
Myself is Ravinder Shekhar from Jammu and Kashmir. Yes, sir. From Jammu. Am I audible to you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Voice is clear. Sir, these days, mostly uh, the practice is that after construction, uh, the client wants that the service uh, AMC should always be there. So, will you uh, right. uh, be able to provide the AMC also? Yes, sir. We will be able to provide. Thank you. Yes. There is also one question uh, in the chat box. What about STP for larger capacities like 50 MLD? Will your treatment be still economical? These systems are basically uh, to, uh, kind of uh, for smaller requirements. These are not meant for MLD or uh, that capacity. Uh, though the process can be uh, implemented in a civil structure but in india our focus is not into mld projects these are meant to be uh, uh, small local treatment units so up to let's say half of mld this should be suitable but beyond that uh, probably the uh, conventional way of creating in civil structure might be more okay thank you Now, Mr. T. S. Rajagopalan has asked one question. What is the minimum occupancy load required for this system? As many times initially, the load would be less than 30 percent. Riyasan, you want to answer? Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, there is two answer. If uh, if you or if uh, user install. 10 kld unit, uh, one unit of 10 kld minimum uh, inlet load is 20%. 20%, uh, always 20% our product uh, uh, will work. And uh, for example, some period, uh, usually 80% uh, uh, sorry, uh, sixty percent, seventy percent, eighty percent, or hundred percent. But some period, for example, one month only, uh, ten percent, twenty percent. Yeah, uh, up to uh one month. Yeah, that is okay. Uh, bacteria uh reduce some percentage, but uh not die completely. So product uh keep uh functional. And one more thing, if those uh, reduce inlet volume, if those case uh, mm, often or some uh, seasonal, seasonal, uh, seasonal, uh, how to say, uh, some season happen those things at that time. Uh, maximum capacity is 10 KLD, but install 5 KLD to unit. And uh, at that time, uh, low low volume of inlet water. Those season uh, use only one line, only five kld tank, and uh, twenty percent of five kld is only uh, one uh, one kiloliter uh, per day. So uh, those control also we can uh, suggest. So answer is twenty percent. Okay. I have a few questions, sir. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, one is that uh, what is this thing that uh, you said that it should be for using it in sanitation, it has to be filtered through a sand, is it? Uh, you mean for flushing, sir? Yeah. Yeah, so for flushing, the, uh, we recommend use of sand filter, which is a multi-grade filter or one media filter. People use it with different, different interchangeable names, followed by activated carbon filter. Because the uh, after the Jokaso, the there might be a little bit of color in the water. And in flushing, uh, user might have, uh, let's say, psychological issues with that. And also, TSS load can be further reduced. So, that is the activated carbon filter and 
dual media filter is recommended to be added by after Jopaso for plus electrons. You don't supply that particular. We can supply, sir. We can supply. So if you look at uh, in our presentation, we said uh, there are different packages. And uh, so we can supply comprehensive solution uh, based on the requirement, which could which include design, project execution in EPC mode, and also operation maintenance. That can be done. Do we have systems for portable water? Uh, normally, uh, technically, yes, for, it can be converted to portable water, but uh, that is not recommended because there are so many applications and there are many psychological and uh, policy related issues uh, of using sewage treated water for drinking applications. What is the, what's the pH value after your uh, system is treated? So, uh, what is the inlet pH we are expecting? Because is it suitable for construction? pH value. After yeah. your what is the pH value? Ryo-san, uh, would you like to answer this question? pH, uh, change in pH and uh, can the water be used for construction purpose? This is the question. Uh, I'm sorry, I cannot understand that his question. Uh, inlet pH is uh, sometimes raw and on, or high or those point or no, no what would be the change of ph after jokaso let's say if the inlet ph is 8 then what would be the outlet ph uh outlet from jokaso uh, always uh neutral uh water ph is neutral uh 6.5 to 8 is uh normal but if inlet is uh, not in our parameter at that time uh, not uh not neutral uh outlet we suggest to put um, neutralizer before joe castle because this is biological system okay uh, i have last question uh you have certificates from governing bodies and uh, which is the best uh, certificate that you have from india india sir there is no agency which is certifying stps in fact, we are now talking to Bureau of Indian Standard to form standard for package STPs. And soon there would be standard in the market. But right now, unfortunately, there is no standard. And we are in the process of getting approval from different agencies, like we've just got from CII Green Building. We also are in process with many other agencies. But unfortunately, there is no central one authority which can give uh, approval or certificates on uh, uh, STPs or package STPs. So we have fine certificates and performance certificate from users. But uh, for example, from uh, Delhi Development Authority, from Nagpur Municipal Corporation, from NTPC, BPCL, and many other customers. But unfortunately, there is no agency which is certifying. So we are requesting Bureau of Indian Standard to do that. So I am satisfied with uh, the certificates from the clients or the consultants. That's what I was aiming at. Yeah, that, that we can provide uh, plenty of them. And also in Japan, for each stage, we have certificate. For example, for like we said, that it is uh, for, uh, suitable for car parking area. So the load and everything uh, is uh, certified by government of Japan. So that certificate also we can provide. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, that was Dr. Ram Prakash, who uh, one of the founder members of our association. Very nice to have you, sir, uh, here. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, please? We have some of the faculty members also from uh, my organization, Bangalore Institute of Technology. Uh, the head of the Department of Civil Engineering is also participating in this program. I welcome all of them. Uh, any questions from others? Okay, so sir, Bangalore, I think uh, there could be very interesting opportunity because Bangalore, uh, both Karnataka has come up with a recycling reuse policy, and there are many interesting projects which are evolving in uh, Bangalore area. And where because our core is uh, treatment, and we are not the infrastructure or civil company, so there could be interesting possibilities of working both with the government and private projects in Bangalore. Area. 
for example there is a new project which has been announced to uh, uh, develop the uh, some of these lakes and uh, water bodies into more uh, lively conditions and that is a project where we are working so maybe there could be good possibilities to collaborate with Yeah, uh, Mr. Pandey, I think uh, we are done. Yeah, thank you very much. I think we are uh, dot in time. Yeah, from ACC, I thank all of you. Uh, Mr. Rio Vaza, Mr. Kamal Tiwari, and Mr. Pandey uh, for explaining uh, the uh, latest technology in uh, STPs. And uh, you please share all the uh, details uh, to our office, and uh, we will uh, convey to our members who are interested. And Sir, I have a small query. Can I? Yeah, please go ahead, Srikant. Uh, any of these equipments are uh, available here to have a look at uh, them, equipments or uh, anything like that? Which place, sir? In Bangalore? Yes, we do have, sir. Uh, please send us your uh, uh, contact number and uh, or email, and uh, we can organize a visit for you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Uh, how to send it uh, to your local representative or? Uh, anything is fine, sir. You can send it to Mr. Pandey, to me, Mr. Vaja, or okay. our local. It depends on your convenience. We are here to serve. <laughs> oh, sure, sure, sure. Yes, sir. Thank yes. you. Yes. The presidents have circulated, I think, or numbers are there in that flyer. Yeah. The contact details are available. Uh, uh, we will share it to all the members. If any further information is required, uh, you can contact uh, Mr. Kamal Tiwari and uh, Mr. Monty. Uh, sir, uh, from ACCA, once again, I thank all of you and uh, I request uh, uh, your organization to become uh, an organization member of Association of Consulting Civil Engineers so that we can work together uh, in, uh, in related areas in the future. So our office manager will be in touch with you. Uh, please uh, become a member of ACCV. And with this, over to Pandey for a round of thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, it was, I think, very enlightening. And uh, I'm particularly thankful to you, uh, Mr. President, Dr. Uh, Aswat, for giving us this opportunity. And we look forward working with uh, all the uh, civil engineer, consulting civil engineers, wherever there is an opportunity, as our CEO has already brought out certain projects in Karnataka. And we would be very happy to associate with your organization. And I was only looking that on, on your uh, this thing that there is a vice president, there is a West. So there could be a North, we could help you, you know, you know, uh, maybe. And, uh, uh, and we look forward uh, working with you. And thank you very much on behalf of our uh, entire our team, our uh, director Rio Waja, for giving opportunity. I will remain in touch with you. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sonia. Thank, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank uh, all the participants uh, for your uh, time and interest. Uh, uh, we will uh, close the meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.